AMD announced the Ryzen 7000 series of CPUs that will be available in late September. After the excitement and hype from the live event, what can we learn from what AMD did say, as well as what they didn't say? And what can we see in the benchmark numbers they showed to compare to Raptor Lake? Let's get into it. AMD is set to launch the Ryzen 7000 series of CPUs on September 27th, which is just six weeks shy of the two years from when they last launched the Ryzen 5000 series. This release has been a long time in the making, and I was excited to see what AMD has to offer since leaked benchmarks were few and far between. Now, I am not going to parrot AMD's marketing material. You have plenty of other reviewers who have done that already. However, if you want to see the slides, I'll leave a link in the description below for those posted at Tech Power Up. I want to review what was specifically claimed at this event. Let's start with what Dr. Lisa Su said in the presentation about the performance of the high-end 7950X. She started out by saying, We now see 13% more IPC in desktop applications. She then went on to declare, The 7950X is simply going to be the best CPU for gamers and for creators. After that, she compared it to the previous gen 5950X and said, The 7950X delivers on average 15% more performance across a range of popular games. She then went on to show a comparison to the i9-12900K and said, You can see that the Ryzen 7950X is the fastest CPU in the world. Wait, I was confused by these statements. How do you compare the 7950X to the i9 and declare it is the fastest? Did I miss the memo? I thought AMD had already declared that they had the fastest gaming CPU in the world in the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. How can the 7950X now be the fastest CPU and she is showing a comparison to the i9? Why don't we see a comparison to the 5800X 3D? Just eight months earlier at CES 2022, Dr. Lisa Su gave a presentation and said, An AMD 3D vCache once again makes Ryzen the fastest gaming CPU in the world. And that comparison was done against that same i9-12900K. So which is it? Is the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D the fastest gaming CPU in the world, or is the Ryzen 9 7950X now the fastest? Let's see if we can figure this one out. Back at CES 2022, Dr. Su showed that the 5800X 3D compared against the previous fastest gaming CPU in the world in the Ryzen 9 5900X, and she said, Across the entire suite, it delivers an average of 15% more frames per second than our previous fastest gaming processor, the Ryzen 9 5900X. If you consider that for gaming, the 5900X and the 5950X are nearly the same, then by substitution, the 5800X 3D is also 15% better than the 5950X. So we have the 5800X 3D that is 15% faster than the 5950X. And we have the 7950X that is 15% faster than the 5950X. Based on those two statements by Dr. Lisa Su, they would be tied. So how does she declare the 7950X is the fastest? Why does she show it compared to a CPU that was already beaten by the 5800X 3D eight months ago? Why does she not show the comparison to the 5800X 3D? Where is the data to support her claim? I found this whole line of reasoning confusing. Then I went back and noticed that she kept saying that is the best for gamers and creators. So maybe, unless you are both a gamer and a creator, then maybe the 7950X isn't the best gaming CPU? I guess we'll just have to wait for the independent reviews to determine which CPU is the best gaming CPU. I'm looking at you, Steve. Moving on. Dr. Sue then showed the single core score comparison in Geekbench. Geekbench? Geekbench is highly used in benchmarking Macs. Trust me, I know but rarely used in benchmarking PCs, especially Ryzen CPUs. For those who don't know, Geekbench has not been kind to AMD CPUs in the past, and it is generally favored Intel CPUs. She showed how the 7950X scored around 2,275, while the i9-12900K was just over 2,000, so the 7950X is 11% faster than Intel. We also have a leak for a Geekbench run of the 7950X at video cards, and they showed 2,217 single core 
and over 24,000 in multi-core. The single core number is in line with what AMD showed and the multi-core number is very impressive. To put that into perspective, that multi-core score is similar to a Threadripper 3970X with 32 cores or Apple's M1 Ultra that has 20 cores, that's 16 performance plus 4 efficiency. Then Mark Papermaster spoke about the IPC number in more detail and explained that it is the geomean of 22 applications. In that chart, it showed the single thread performance IPC gain in Cinebench R23 as 9%. So if we look at Cinebench R23 of the 5950X from a review at Tech Power Up, it shows the single core score of 1638. If we then add 9% and then the clock speed advantage of the 7950X, that 7950X could score up to 2076, which would just overtake the i9-12900K. Likewise, AMD showed the Cinebench multi-thread performance to be 47% better than the 5950X. Looking at Tech Power Up's numbers, the 7950X should score just under 38,000. That blows away the i9-12900K, which is just under 28,000. I am surprised AMD didn't highlight that more in this benchmark, and they focused on the V-Ray benchmark, even though the 5950X already beats the i9-12900K in that benchmark. From the leaks on Raptor Lake, we have two Cinebench R23 scores from leaker 1 Raichu. The first is using the standard 250 power limit, and the multi-core score comes in at 35,000, while the other is overclocked to a very high 350 watt power limit, and it scores 40,000. So again, the Cinebench score of the 7950X at about 38,000 should compete well with the non-overclocked Raptor Lake. We also have a leak for the i9-13900K in Geekbench, and although it was declared invalid, the scores look representative of what it could achieve. This one was at 5.5 GHz, so if Intel truly goes to 5.8 GHz, it should achieve over 2200 in the single core score and be right there with the 7950X. One thing that really impressed me about Zen 4 are the increase in clock speeds. AMD finally has clock parity with Intel. The wins and losses between these two CPUs will be based on how well they design their architectures. Is the Zen 4 architecture, which as Mark Papermaster described, Zen 4 is a derivative of Zen 3. Is it more improved than Intel's Raptor Lake, which as we know is the same microarchitecture as Alder Lake? There is one area that brings me a little concern for Zen 4. That concern is for memory speed and latency. The Zen 4 memory sweet spot is said to be DDR5-6000. Also, AMD showed a memory latency of over 60 nanoseconds at 63. And that is after using AMD Expo. Raptor Lake, on the other hand, is showing good memory support and supposedly has a memory sweet spot of DDR5-6800. We'll have to watch closely how the benchmarks are run on each system. Will the Intel system be constrained to run at Zen 4's sweet spot as AMD did? Will the AMD system be constrained to run at Raptor Lake's sweet spot? Let's hope someone does memory scaling to find out the performance impact to each one. By the way, if you like analysis like this, like, share, and subscribe. And let me know in the comments below who do you think is going to take the gaming crown later this fall. Oh, and besides not mentioning the 5800X3D, what else is it that AMD didn't say? From AMD's presentation, the 7950X is the best CPU for gamers and creators. And if Zen 4 is so good that they are confident to charge $300 for 6 cores and $400 for 8 cores, then why doesn't AMD follow that up with charging $600 for 12 cores and $800 for 16 cores? They are charging $50 a core at the low end, but less than $50 at the high end. If they are going to be bold with their pricing for gamers, why are they not as bold in pricing for creators? From a shareholder perspective, and full disclosure, I am not, why is AMD not charging the same price per core or even higher for what is now the de facto HEDT CPU? AMD abandoned Threadripper, and then they only have the workstation slash enterprise grade Threadripper Pro, where they now charge $100 per core. The high end is where they can make the higher margins. But AMD did not do that. Instead, they kept the 12 core the same price and actually reduced the price of the 16 core from $799 to $699.
that price reduction speaks volumes. It suggests that AMD is not certain in its performance against Raptor Lake. And Intel told its investors, and indirectly to AMD, that it is raising prices up to 20% on its CPUs. That would mean the i9-13900K may be 20% higher than the 12900K, making the Raptor Lake i9 around $700. Maybe AMD is not as confident as their presentation suggested. Maybe the leaks on Raptor Lake performance changed their mind. I love competition. Based on these numbers, the Zen 4 vs Raptor Lake showdown will be a great one. With clock parity, the winner will be decided on who has the better architecture and memory controller. When is the last time we had a showdown like this between CPUs? This release is going to be so much better than the previous releases I covered. Check out my videos on Alder Lake to understand why Intel went big little. I have more to say about Ryzen 7000, but I'll save that for another video. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.